the beginnings of River of Fundament were to do with um, a kind of a dissatisfaction that I was feeling in my last um, film-based project, Drawing Restraint 9, and feeling like I had come to the end of the experiment with regard to making film in that way. And around that time, Jonathan Bepler and I had talked about the possibility of making something in a live situation. And that appealed to me more and more. Um, Jonathan's um, background is more to do with um, the language of theater and opera, and um, you know, I think he understands that language much better than I do. So the proposal of finding a place where the two of, I, two of us could meet was, um, was, an, it was an interesting conversation. Because I was calling it an opera in some way, um, what I was always interested in was how to have the music be coming from, you know, from the piece, so, or from what you're seeing. So then it was, yeah, it was about finding, you know, finding the musicality in every moment that was being proposed, you know? So we, we had sometimes started with narrative idea. There was some, something going to happen, and then I would, was thinking about how to find, how to make that music, what would be the musical element of it. And other times it started just with, you know, musical desire, and then we made that sort of be part of the, the narrative. You know, we considered both what was happening physically and what was happening musically and tried to find different ways of integrating them. You know, during all these conversations, I had a, a meeting with Norman Mailer, who I had worked with before on Cree Master 2, and he asked me if I had ever read Ancient Evenings, and I hadn't, hadn't even heard of it. And he said, you should read this, you should look into this, there's probably something in this for you, you might find it interesting for a film. And, uh, and I said, you know, I'm not really interested in making a film right now, but I'd love to read it. And, and I got back to him right away and said, you know, I think this could be a great libretto for what we're talking about doing. So we talked a little bit about it, and then unfortunately he passed away not long after that. So. So then there was this text that sort of landed in our laps, and, um, and it grew from there. Many lights appeared above my head, and they were like a ladder of lights with many rungs. I seized the first and began to ascend from the river. The ladder twisted and was not easy to climb, but as it swayed, the fields of gold on the other bank receded from me. You know, the structure of the film has uh, this domestic interior as its backbone. And over the course of the story, the, the house changes. Um, the guests, which begin as sort of naturalistic characters, um, transform. And um, they're replaced by um, these sort of spirit characters. And um, occasionally we cut away from the house and out into the landscape, and when that happens, those scenes are these live performed scenes that are witnessed by a group of onlookers. So I guess structurally I was thinking about something like Wizard of Oz, where you have this sort of domestic uh, interior that you, that you uh, cut away from and you go out into this space where anything is possible. You know, that said that there's a kind of an inversion of that idea with this project that that in the performed scenes, it's clear that what you're seeing actually happened, it happened in real time. So that in a way, it's much more concrete than that domestic interior, which is the opposite of, of Wizard of Oz, really. One of the things that I love about the, the text is the way that the landscape um, is interchangeable with the, the figure, that, that the figure or the, the protagonist is dying. In the beginning of Ancient Evenings, you, know, you, you are hearing first person the account of a person dying and his various soul states visiting him. It's, it's sort of intercut really with with descriptions of the environment where you know molten iron is bubbling below the surface um, the you know the earth is excreting 
sulfur gases, like basically the, the fluids of the, of the body or the, the waste product of the body is interchangeable with the waste of the, uh, the earth. And um, I guess I look for that in subject matter. I'm interested in that, in, in kind of displacing human, human emotion or sort of um, a kind of um, organicness in a human character into architecture, into the landscape. I always feel that music has its own sort of physicality and I try uh, to, to not start with the images, you know, to have the, at the same time the images are kind of being generated, that the music have that genesis also, that there's a sort of conceptual bud or something and then the music comes out of that on my side and then the visuals are sort of coming up from Matthew's side. So the instruments made on the assembly line in Detroit out of sheet metal, the idea for that came from visiting locations in Detroit and visiting assembly line and car manufacturers. And we had thought of possibly trying to do a scene at a working car, you know, assembly line. And then somehow it morphed to not being a real assembly line, but kind of having a recital situation. Um, and the assembly line was there to make the instruments which were played at the recital. Um, and then how they, how they ended up sounding was um, in a way secondary, you know. I mean, we did design these things based on something between a cello and a viola, and I knew that I wanted it to have a bit of an early music sound, but also for it to have a kind of um, fragile, sort of unsuccessful sound, you know, something <laughs> between, you know, this ideal of of uh, industry and the sort of failure of it at the same time. What I need out of a, a subject is a kind of host body that my work can pass through. and. Um, you know, a book like Ancient Evenings is, in a way, a perfect subject for me because it's, there's things that I love about it and things that I hate about it. And it has that kind of conflict in it. And Mailer has that kind of conflict in him, you know. But it's, it's not really about him, nor is it even an adaptation of Ancient Evenings, in my opinion. It's, it's sort of more about a guest passing through a host body and making intermittent contact with it and moving on.